Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from Photoshop Cafe and today I'm going to show you why there's two opacity sliders inside the layers panel inside of Photoshop. <laughs> So you may have noticed that there's two different opacity sliders inside of the layers panel in Photoshop. What are those there for? Well, really that's the secret slider to create transparent uh, objects such as glass and liquid for type. Let me show you exactly how it works. I'm going to create some text here. I'm going to type in cold dog and I'm going to hit control T or command T for free transform. And I'm just going to click and drag in the corner there to create some nice big type here. This is cold dog. So let's put that there. Great. Now what we want to do is let's fill it with white first. So the quick way to fill something with white, especially if it's the background color is actually just hit command and that would be control on windows and backspace. And on Mac, that's command backspace on windows is control delete. And even type, you can actually fill even if it's unselected. So you don't have to use the um, select tool to change the color of type. Okay, so we're gonna choose effects. This is where all our layer styles live. And we're gonna choose bevel and emboss. So this is gonna pop up here. And one of the tricks about making bevel and emboss look good is to actually go into contour here and make sure you turn on anti-aliasing and what it does is it gives it the edge but it looks a lot nicer than just grabbing it up under the bevel and emboss there and let's grab this double ridge and see how nice and clean it is if I took the anti-aliasing off you'd see it kind of get a little bit jaggy and really I don't know why that's off by default it really should be on and if we go under the bevel and emboss now we can see our settings now there's a couple of little tricks here to make this work now depth what this does is it just kind of gives it more or less contrast around the edge. It just kind of makes it look more deeper or shallower in the chisel. But the size is actually where we control the size of our bevel and emboss. In fact, why don't we go a big size and I'll show you what the depth does. See what it does there? Is it just kind of makes it look a little bit more chiseled out, a little deeper. And it's more just really adding contrast to that area. So I'm just going to turn that all the way up. And we're going to take our size down a little bit. And we, that's that's not bad, uh, but in order to make this shading look good, we're going to grab it and drag it more towards the middle, and just kind of get it. There we go. That's nice. And we're doing one seventy seven and thirty two right there. Okay. So the thing is, this doesn't really at all look like glass, does it? Because it's not see through. So let me just click OK to apply it. And if we look under the opacity, we've got opacity and fill. If we take our opacity down. All this does is it just changes the transparency of the whole thing. Now you could kind of do that for glass, but it's really not the way to do it. We want to take our opacity all the way up and then fill opacity. What it does is it just gets rid of this solid color, such as that white. And it lets only the layer style show through. So now we're actually turning down the opacity of that layer and the layer style itself is showing through. So that's kind of a, a way to get that transparent effect. Now, one of the things you might do is bring this up a little bit because I want to show just some of the white there, but I want it to kind of show through. So what we can do to edit this is we're going to double click on effects. It's going to open this up again. And I'm not really kind of digging our contour. Let's try some different ones. Maybe that one's looking a little bit better and see how we can just go in here. We can try different ones, but that's really the one we want. So here's the other thing to really make this work change the gloss contour and make it the same. Boom. See that now it's really hitting and we're going to change our angle more straight on. Let's just kind of play around with it. There we go. That's looking better. Now we're getting that glossy effect and we're going to create a little bit of a shadow. So we're going to choose a drop shadow. But before I add the shadow, actually, what we're going to do is we're going to make it kind of a blue cool effect. So we're going to choose the color overlay and this is how we can add color in here. Uh, we're going to add a little bit of blue here without losing our opacity. You'll see what I mean. So we go there and now we can take the opacity down in here and just give it a little blue kind of a, a feel there. Just so it's got a little bit, you know, kind of glossy. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go to our drop shadow. This time I'm going to change the color of the drop shadow to a blue. So let's click up there. Let's grab that bluish color. And I'm going to change the size all the way down and the spread all the way down. 
And then what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of set our size here just to kind of soften it on the edges. That's looking pretty good. And you could just play around with the opacity if you kind of want to make it look glowing like it's a kind of a glowing glass effect. And by the way, you can drag on here to change a glass distance or the, you know, the actual angle. If I move it around, you can see what happens. See that? And I kind of like that. That's nice. So I'm just going to bring this in at the same angle. Kind of give us that glossy effect. And I'm going to bring our opacity back down just a little bit. Maybe more. So it's just kind of faint. And let's bring that distance down. So we've just got a slight little glow around there. So anyway, right now I'm lucky I'm in California where it's actually quite warm. What about where you are? What's the temperature? Is it is it freezing over or is it nice and warm where you are as well? Let me know in the comments underneath. By the way, if you're not part of the Cafe Crew, hit the subscribe button right now and you're going to get a new tutorial every single week. And also hit that little notification bell and that will let you know when I upload a new tutorial and also it'll let you know when I do live streams, which I do occasionally. And in fact, if you've got a question for my next live stream, drop that into the comments as well. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. If you like this, smash that like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.